wanted to find out how the process of working on projects takes place in Reggio Emilia. Therefore, Dr. Gandini and I invited Loris Malaguzzi, founder of the program, Carlina Rinaldi, pedagogista, Giovanni Piazza, atelierista, and Amelia Gambetti, project teacher, to include us in the development of a project. And this would show how children and adults together construct their experience, how they document it, and how documentation evolves and contributes to the understanding of the learning process of children and adults. We thought that by being part of the documentation, that is by videotaping, photographing, and observing periodically with them, and discussing with them what we had seen, we could get to the core of this process. We were asking ourselves many questions. How do teachers decide to go in one direction rather than another? How do children express their interests, their discoveries and understanding? Does the organization of the school support this process? Does the curriculum really emerge during the activity of children? How using a variety of media supports the learning process? Does cooperation among children help them progress in their learning? How do teachers cooperate to further learning? And finally, do all the adults really help to build a sense of community? To introduce the video that you are about to see, we have created a timescape of images that run quickly from the beginning of the project to the end. You will see the same figures again during the course of the video. The timescape runs from February 17th to June 27th, 1992. The project begins in the park that surrounds La Valletta School in Reggio Emilia. There is always something going on for the children in this park. They are visited by small animal friends. The little birds are especially loved by the children. Two years before the amusement park, the five-year-olds were involved in exploring the meadow in the park. They became interested in how it looked from the bird's perspective, and they made a mural of the meadow to show this view. They also painted a view of this same meadow from an ant's perspective. In the year prior to the amusement park, following the study of the meadow, the five-year-olds built bird houses, a small lake, and an observatory to watch the birds play in the water. These connections are an important starting point. When teachers decide to participate in a project, they discuss at length with Carlina and Lars the best way to begin. They decided to ask the children what they remembered about the park activity. The children remembered a great deal and they began to exchange ideas about how they could make the park fun for the birds. Andrea said the birds would enjoy having their lake again. Filippo had other ideas about placing a water wheel in the lake, like the one on a water mill. Georgia thought that the birds would need new houses and nests where they could eat, drink, and rest. The ideas about merry-go-rounds and amusements for the birds grew in the discussion, along with their interest in pipes, water pressure, and the movement of the water in fountains and the small lake. Children thought of many things and small details, a haunted house, a tunnel, many fountains to make the park beautiful. One child came up with the idea of an amusement park, and immediately they thought of a ticket booth to enter the park. The birds would come and have a good time. One child said, I am sure the birds are listening, and saying these children have a wonderful idea. Children are now invited to transfer their ideas into graphics. Filippo draws mountains with water pouring down two channels and the water wheel paddles serve as a diving board for the little bird. Agnese draws the park outside with all the animal friends that visit and an observatory for watching the birds and a birdhouse. Andrea gives all of his attention to a birdhouse attached to a tree and provides an elevator for the small birds, particularly the ones who fall from their nest in the spring. At this point, as well as many other times during the project, the educators meet to analyze their notes and observations, the transcriptions of the children's dialogues, the children's drawings, and actions captured through slides and video. This is part of a flowchart made by the educators, and it shows the prehistory of the amusement park project. 
This prehistory includes projects from the previous two years where children were also focused on birds, birdhouses, small lakes, mountains, and water. This latter part of the flowchart shows that the adults hypothesized the children would remember some of the activities done by the older children the previous year. This was done in preparation of the first meeting in February. This other part of the flowchart shows the items of interest that the children brought up in their first conversation together. The dots next to some of the items indicate that this particular interest was actually built or otherwise implemented. The teachers, after examining all the materials, decided to pursue two of the strongest interests of the children, fountains and water wheels. In this timescape, we will start by outlining the children's interest in fountains. Children told what they knew and remembered about fountains through words and through drawings. This is a fountain frozen in the cold that Alice loved. Then they constructed their fountains in clay. They made these clay fountains from drawings they had made and showed each other how they made their fountains. Telling is an important part of the Reggio approach. Then they went out to the park to look at the fountains. Together they rediscovered these familiar fountains. For example, for the first time the children made remarks about the sounds the water makes as it comes out of the fountain. By sketching and observing the fountains, new ideas and hypotheses came to the children. They draw how the water flows and sprays. The children's photographs are developed into slides. These slides are then projected on a large screen that allows the children to enter the slide and revisit their experience with renewed interest and pleasure. Amalia meets with the children and asks them to look at their photographs of the fountains. Amelia takes notes on what the children say about how the fountains work. In another case, two boys draw on paper attached to a plexiglass easel where a slide of a fountain is projected from the rear. Together they draw the inside of the pipes and the motors of this large fountain. They draw a complex system of pipes, motors, and reservoirs shown here without the slide. At many points during the course of this project, the children meet in groups to discuss their work and their ideas. The children also work on a second theme of the project, the water wheels. Children already had some knowledge, but photographs and books, usually on loan from parents, helped to stimulate their discussions. One child remembered about a water mill found on an everyday box of a well-known brand of biscuits. After this discussion, they rendered their knowledge in drawings. They use these drawings to build water wheels and paper. It is clear that these early versions did not capture the correct orientation of the water wheel paddle. But later when Andrea starts to explain his paper water wheel to Amelia, he corrects the orientation of the paddle so it would catch the water. When Andrea makes the water wheel in clay, he transfers this understanding about the paddle blade and makes sure that the paddle blade is twisted in the correct orientation. During this time, the educators noticed that the children were sometimes confused about the river moving the wheel or the wheel moving the river. In order to help the children explore these concepts, the educators invited children to play with pinwheels, hoping they would see the analogy between wind and air. It was clear that the air moves the pinwheel, and this should help the children think about the water moving the water wheel. The educators also decided that the children needed some sort of water flow to further the exploration of fountains and water wheels. The children made designs for a water basin to be built in the atelier. They participated in the construction of the wooden and plexiglass water basin. 
Right away, the children had many ideas on how to use the flowing water. Filippo places the pinwheel in the water stream to make generalizations from air to water. Children vary the incline of a channel with flowing water. They decide to make a small water wheel from a spool, foil, and a pencil as an axle. This took many trials and errors, but it finally worked. The children also designed and then made larger wheels from materials supplied by parents and materials found in the school. The activity of the core group of children then spread to the entire class, as you see here in this block construction of fountains and waterways, and in these connecting straws made into water wheels and into fountains. So many things were happening that the teachers decided to keep track by making a chart of all these parallel activities. The teachers even used acetate overlays to track the complexity of the children's work, but this proved too much detail. Now that the weather was warmer, the children were able to experiment with water flow outside using plastic hoses of many thicknesses and colors. The children wanted to build informal fountains for themselves. Everyone now felt it was time to plan where all the amusements would go in the park. The children with Giovanni the Atelierista began to design the items to go in the park. Giovanni made a composite design using all the ideas given him by the children. The composite was used outside as a reference point to discuss the layout of the amusement park for birds. Bird houses were among the many things to be made, and parents helped a great deal. The local Audubon Society, called Lipu, sent a bird expert to play special bird houses in the trees and to explain many things about birds to the children. Channels were placed in the park so children from all the classrooms could try them out. They used spools and boats in the flowing water. The city water company was asked to install extra water pipes outside. The children inspected how the new supply comes from the side of their school and continues through the yard to a big barrel on a hill built by volunteers from the community. The children had many questions for the man from the city waterworks. They even try some of the pipe fitting equipment. Once the extra pipes were installed, the children were able to work on the small lake that had been included in their original plan. And they worked on building more channels that served as a flow for more water wheels. The children looked at their earlier drawings of things they wanted to build and later did build. This drawing of a Ferris wheel becomes a Ferris wheel fountain in the park. This drawing of a bird elevator is the inspiration of this wood and wire model. Designs and constructions of fountain funnels and fountain sprays. Here a drawing tells a whole story of birds diving off a high diving board and one bird who changes his mind in a real spring to help the birds gain height in their dives. A model ladder was built from wood and string. The spring in the drawing served as a guide for making the model. More channels drawn and then made outside. With the help of the adults, the children construct large fountains and add many interesting objects that turn and spin. The parents, continually involved, help to plan the completion and the inauguration of the amusement park for birds. An invitation is prepared from drawings by the children. A reporter had come to interview the teachers of the children and an article appeared in the Reggio Gazette 
announcing the opening of the amusement park for birds. The three-year-olds continued to prepare clay decoys to entice the birds to come. The other children, four and five-year-olds, decided to make many little animals in clay to make the park more welcoming. Here are some of the many other constructions, a bird made of cork and feathers, a telephone so the birds can call home, a beach with umbrellas so the birds can relax in the shade. Parents and grandparents help hang the many things that needed to be hung in the trees, and the cooks, along with several helpers, prepared a gigantic cake on a pedestal made to look like a fountain spray. The inauguration was a great success. The mayor and all the city dignitaries came. All the children, parents and grandparents, citizens from the area, all the teachers from the other schools. The children also brought their pets to share in the celebration and to admire the fountains. All this story and its essential parts were documented and can now be read and enjoyed and revisited on the walls inside La Valletta School. In your view, Loris, which are the elements that contribute to make a good project? The elements of a good project are essentially a few. The first is to produce or to find an initial motivation which warms up the children. There is always a sort of prologue which starts by sharing information in the group concerning the theme, extracting it above all from the thoughts and the ideas the children have. Another point, to begin a project, it means in some way to have already within ourselves as adults the awareness of what one is doing and what could be done. That means there are already many expectations and predictions or hypotheses on the part of the adults. Some of these expectations will be disappointed, others will become greater, lost or found again. We will have to run after some others during the journey that the children make in the course of the project. Another important thing is that children use their capacities to predict and to work out solutions in order to organize their work. That means for the children to find a method of work that would allow them to feel at home along many different paths that the children themselves would have entered and they, they will, along the way, overcome, abandon or substitute. As a consequence, in the great number of negotiations that will occur among the children, what in general we see is the extraordinary capacity that children have. In order to observe some of the many meaningful paths that children and teachers follow during this project, we chose to take time to look carefully at a few specific episodes. These episodes follow the tracks of the timescape and lead to the preparations and final inauguration of the amusement park. We wanted to examine closely children's and teachers' hypotheses, their organization of environments and materials, and their use of symbolic languages. We wanted to watch the interactions and the negotiations that took place among children and with teachers in the solution of problems and the construction of knowledge. We wanted to savor with them the pleasure of discovering and learning together during an amiable project.
Allora, una fontana l'ho vista con i miei zii. The following day, Amelia reads back to the children what they told her about their fountain. Georgia had told that her fountain looked like a weeping willow. C'erano anche dei pesci. Era bellissima, era bellissima. Then Amelia turns to Alice. You said that your fountain was in the mountains. It was all made of ice and that small fish also made of ice. Amelia encourages the children to draw and to call her if they need help in remembering. Now Alice asks Amelia to help her to add some words to her drawing. She wants to write fountain of ice and small fish made of ice. Fontana di ghiaccio e pesciolini di ghiaccio. Pesciolini di ghiaccio. When children request it, and five-year-olds often do, teachers write out in capital letters words for them to copy. Here Alice copies the words fountain of ice, but then she forgets about writing about the small fish made of ice. Children are encouraged to discuss what they did and ask questions among friends once they are finished with a piece of work. Here, Alice is explaining her drawing. She points to the small fish on the top of her fountain of ice. Georgia asks if the fish is real, and Alice responds, no, it's just pretend, it's made of ice. Children can be quite inquisitive. Here Georgia wants to ask more about the fish drawn by Alice. She asks, what happens if the eyes melt? Alice says that the head and tail of the fish will droop, but it will sti be, still be part of the fountain. Understand now, Georgia says, when the ice melts away, the body of the fish will still be there. Now it is Agnese's turn to answer some questions. This tight small group is seriously engaged in the pleasure of exchanging ideas. Mm -hmm. 
Simone is making his fountain looking at the drawing. Because his drawing has this decoration on the top, he feels compelled to make it in the clay. I should have made it thicker. It's falling down. Help! I'm through with this fountain. The following video segment shows Georgia working on a clay fountain using her drawing as a blueprint. She pauses to figure out how many more wires she will have to add to make her clay fountain. The drawing shows 10 sprays on each side of the fountain. The sprays in some places are difficult to distinguish. She has placed three wires on the left side and needs to place seven more. She counts out loud saying three, then saying seven for those remaining. Simone overhears this and assumes that George is trying to figure out how many wires she needs all together on one side. A heated discussion occurs, driven by this confusion between total items and items remaining. Let's listen to the debate that follows and notice how articulate both children are, precisely because they initially failed to communicate. Georgia and Simone have been working for 48 minutes. Giovanni participates and observes the children through the video camera. Giovanni, I cannot fit them. I have to make more room. I place one here. Here, one, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. How many do you need? I need one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. I need five. How many do you need? Five on this side. And one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on this side. How many did you do? I did three so far. How many do you need? I need seven where I did three, and where I did four, I need five. Ah, oh, okay. Now Simone comments on the number of sprays that she needs for her fountain. Giovanni asks, are you sure, to uh, Simone, and then invites him to go and look at the number of sprays with her. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, 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 don't count this way. Oh, please do not shout. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, whoa, whoa. don't count this way. Yes, because there are two. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But Giovanni, he counts all of them together. The children, I don't know how they should be counted. If there are, if you have to count three, then you start again. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. Listen. Well, in here, the two children get confused about the number of sprays. Eight sprays, nine sprays, ten sprays. There are eight. No, so also you are making a mistake, Georgia says to Simone. Oh, please, I'm trying to con count how many wires you did. Nine, eh, you're continuing, you see, you're making messo, other mistakes. No, I did three. I did one, two, three. I don't understand anything. Wait a second, wait a second. I cannot understand. You say one thing, then you say another. Wait a second. Try to understand each other, children. Try to work it out. To start, you have to count to three. Then you start again. You count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then all in all, there are ten. Yes, I know there are ten all in all, but I want to know that I have to make seven. Oh, you should have explained to me before. I didn't understand what you said. You never understand anything. I don't understand. You are the one who doesn't explain well things. I explained it a hundred times. Enough. What is the problem, Giovanni said. There is a problem that I don't understand what you said. How many do you have here? There are three and four. How many do you have to do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. So you all agree, right? But I did not understand what she was saying. She said three, she said seven. I was say, saying that you first have to count to three and then start off again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This was because you had done three before. So you did three before. And then you have to start again from one to count. I didn't understand anything. She was saying one thing, she was saying another. But it's enough to count here, says Giovanni, to ten. There are ten. But I was not asking how many there were. I wanted to know how many I had to do. So I count to three and then put them aside because I have already done them. So you put them aside because you already done them? Okay. Then I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you need to do seven. Georgia worked for several days on her weeping fountain. Here's the final product. Andrea explains to George and Filippo the large drawing he made of the pipes and fountains of the city water system. It includes, of course, his favorite fountain with angels. Georgia says, I want you to ask you if there is still water in this pipe, in Andrea. Certainly. Last week it rained so much, so much, and so much that there is a lot of water.
E se la cosa non si è riempita troppo? Beh, direi ah. che allora sarebbero chiuse. Sì. Ci avrei messo un cartello di chiusura che non, ci, non va mica l'acqua, figli. Invece va l'acqua. Filippo ha detto Andrea, why didn't you do any water in your fountain? Well, says Infatti, Andrea, I guess I forgot. Perché lì in Georgia mi sono offers him di farla. marker. Marello? Sì. Sì. Giorgia says, a fare how long do you take? Subito. No, no, è lì, non ho fatto tanto vicino. E come fa arrivare se non c'è il tubo pieno? E si fermerà lì. Andrea says, here. Giorgia says, come on, quickly. And Andrea says, I'm done. And Filippo, this is not enough. Put there more water. E' qui che non si vede neanche. Ogni cosa che ti dice Giovanni, mi devi guardare sempre me. Andrea says, here it is. Ecco. Thank you. 
wanted to uh, discuss with you and have your views about emergent curriculum because mm -hmm. in the work we have done together, and not only that, in the interest of the American educators, this is a very important theme. Yeah. How do you keep the momentum in the interest of the children and support them? Uh, to, to be able to capture the moment, I think, is one of the most difficult mm -hmm. uh, point of the emergent curriculum. And in this case, you, are, uh, you have to be really able uh, to listen. And uh, um, what you have uh, and is, uh, is uh, to, to do this in group. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, in group, you really can, in a metaphorical uh, way of uh, meaning to listen, you can really listen more and more, mm -hmm. and you can uh, to uh, try to understand if uh, you have uh, to help uh, children to go deeper, create uh, again new excitement, mm, and uh, particularly you can decide what kind of, of uh, strategy you mm -hmm. can use. Listen, in your view, how can this fountain work? I think it could have a small engine. Where? Inside? Inside where? Could you show me? Inside here? I'm not sure. Inside the column? I'm not sure. Well, in your opinion, try to think how it could be. It should be here, because if the water goes up and passes by again, it's continuous, and that's the way it should be. You think it should be under here? What is this? This is the basin, where the water goes in. In my opinion, the water goes up, and then it throws it down. Do you think it works this way? I think so, because if it works all the time, it has to be so. Otherwise, it would go off. There is something I don't understand. How can the water go up with the small engine? As you told me before, it throws it up and then down. How does the small engine work? You know, I have a problem with engines. I'm really not very good. I could give you an example. I could make you an example. With the markers, I could make an example. So I could explain to you how it worked. Do you want to do it now? I'm going to do it now. Amelia leaves to get some markers for Simone. Simone draws a fountain that looks very much like the drinking fountain in his photograph. Notice how he draws the water faucet, then the water basin, followed by the water pump, his motor. Then he adds the water as it flows from the top to the bottom. But he also drew the pipes inside to show how the water flows up to the top. Amelia asks him to use his drawing to explain how the fountain works. Amelia asks, now I understand, but I would like to know something. How does the fountain get the water up? What does it have inside? Simone thinks very hard. Simone finally answers, it must have two fans, one in reverse to suck the water up and another one that goes clockwise to push the water up. Perhaps he meant to say down. Amelia asks, what does it mean clockwise? 
like a clock. The one that sucks up the water goes talk, talk. The one that pushes the water up. Simone's words are still a little confused. As Amelia writes Simone's words, she repeats what he had said, perhaps in hopes that he could hear the illogic of his own. Then Amelia asks, Are you finished? Simone says, I want to make the other fan. He does so, then signs his name. underground under the fountain yes and what do these pipes do they take the water somewhere and then they bring it here 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 where here inside the fountain and then it comes all out okay so they take the water there and it all then comes out but these pipes that you say come from somewhere, in your opinion, from where do they come? From where the water is, from the wells, I don't know. Ah, from a well, yes, it could be. And there is water in the well? Yes. Do you know where is a water in the well? Do you know where a well is? Yes. Where? It could be in the streets under... Under the street where, do you think it is under the street where we walk? No, no, it, it could be on the side, on the external side of the street. Ah, in the external side of the street there could be wells in your view, yes. I would like to know, how does the water get into the well? I think this well must be, must be full of water if the pipes can take water to bring to the fountain. But how does the water get into the well? It could come from another place where there is water. Yes, but if the pipes get the water, you know, I'm trying to understand because it's also difficult for me. I also have difficulties with this thing. I want to understand with you because when we speak with Giovanni, he knows always everything about pipes and about machines. This time, we could be the one to explain to him. If we help each other, we can really understand that. So, you told me that there are pipes underneath. These pipes that bring the water to the fountain go to get it in the well, right? Yes. Then it means that on the ground near the street there are wells with water where the pipes go to take the water and bring it to the fountain. Yes. Very well. I would like to know how comes that in these wells there is water. I cannot really think why. I do not know if somebody puts it in, it ends there. I do not know. It could just end there. But from where does it come? I'm thinking, but does it not come to my mind? From where could it come? How it could happen? Any idea? Any idea is coming? No? We should really try to talk with Filippo and Simone tomorrow morning before Giovanni comes. We could ask them on his side. Do you think we should ask them? Yes. Simone or Filippo? Both of them. I will write this so that I do not forget. Before seeing Giovanni, we asked Filippo and Simone from where, in their opinion, the water could come into the wells.
e che il pozzo era collegato. On the next day, Alice and Filippo returned to the mini atelier. Amelia reads their words back to them, the words they had used to describe the photograph they took of the fountain. This is done in preparation for drawing the fountain. Filippo begins to draw a water tank that has stairs going up for the workers and a large pipe for the water to come down. Notice the different qualities of the marks that signify the stairs. Versus the flowing water. Since Filippo remembers telling Amelia about the pipes inside the fountain, he begins to draw the inside pipes on the acetate sheet that covers the large photograph. They are drawing over the enlargement of their photos of the fountains. These photos are covered with acetate so that they may show the inside of the fountains and how they work. After a few minutes, Amelia places a white paper under the acetate so that Filippo can see his marks in isolation. This process of decontextualizing the marks helps children think more clearly about the relation between their work and the photograph. You will also see this process in the next segment where the children draw on the image of a slide and then the slide is turned off. Simone and Andrea see their photograph of the park fountain enlarged and projected onto the rear of the plexiglass easel. They are amazed at this lighted piece of paper. After spending some time exploring the source of this image, they figure that the image comes from the slide projector. Now they are ready to begin. Amelia invites them to draw on the paper in order to show how the fountain works. Both boys have talked about this before. You recall how Simone drew the inside of the drinking fountain while looking at the Polaroid pictures. The boys discuss how they should begin. They remember their earlier theory that the fountain must have a little motor inside. Andrea, the boy on the left, suggests that they first draw the motor. Simone agrees, but suggests that there may be more than one little motor inside the fountain. Andrea says, let's put a motor here, pointing to the top of the fountain. The boys literally work together in the same space to draw the little motor that sprays the water out of the top of the fountain. Good, Simone says. They discuss the location of the nozzle for the spray. Simone says that it's not easy to see it in the photograph. Simone insists that they have to make a pipe in order for the spray to get water. Giovanni encourages the boys to do just that. They draw a small tube and then together show how the water overflows the fountain ledge. They continue to connect the water spray with the pipes and then extend the pipes to the motor. 
Andrea gives Simone verbal support by telling Simone's mark to turn, turn, as Simone draws the crook in his pipe. At this point, the educators decided to let the boys see their work without the slide. Turning the slide off puts the boys' work into relief and challenges them to think about its meaning without the context of the fountain. As the boys describe the pipes and motors seen here on the white paper, they must go beyond the givens of the slide. Giovanni notices that the boys have drawn the pipes underground. Simone has reasoned that these pipes are necessary as a source of water. Simone continues to explain the complete system, but when he begins to explain the large structure on the right, Giovanni interrupts him and asks him to explain more slowly. Simone describes the function of this structure. It is a water reserve or tank that has a balance on top, some sort of a valve to cut the water on and off. Now Andrea and Simone continue their work. Andrea has decided the fountain system needs symmetry, so he begins to copy the balance structure made by Simone on the right. Simone takes issue with Andrea and asks, Are you copying me, Cavalelli? Simone says, I draw the door, you draw the door. I draw the balance, you draw the balance. Andrea insists that his is different because his door is orange while Simone's is white. Giovanni also comments on other differences as a way to diffuse the tension. To Simone, Giovanni says, you have four buttons on your motor, well, Andrea did five. The tension is diffused and the boys shift their discussion to what colors to use to paint the water. Simone and Andrea had worked for over 40 minutes on their drawing. Now the children will summarize their work. Once again, the slide will be turned off. Simone is pleased that their drawing remains even when the slide is turned off. Amalia asked Giovanni to listen to the boys' summary. The boys discuss how to begin this summary. Andrea proposes that he will describe the top of the drawing while Simone can describe the bottom. Andrea wants to point out the differences between the two water tanks, one on the right and the one on the left. Simone still feels that Andrea copied Simone's work. But Andrea is quick to point out that the bigger weight on the balance is on the outside left on his and on the outside right on Simone's. We can say that Andrea, rather than copying Simone's tank, was completing the overall drawing by adding symmetry to the water system. Simone acknowledges that the two tanks are a little different, but in effect are equal. Giovanni likes this resolution, so says, yes, they are both equal. Simone finishes with a refined summary of how the tank and the balance work to regulate the flow of water through the fountain. I took the uh, before about uh, how important is ex excitement mm -hmm. and uh, how uh, can the same children, uh, how the same children can be able to do this. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but uh, sometimes, uh, as uh, the, you have to help them to uh, re excite or to d discover something new or to. Uh, um, to find a different uh, relationship with mm -hmm. 
the same subject in which you are, and really slides can help very much to do this. Later, Giovanni Nanelli discussed the work of the Giovanni noticed how the graphic achievement is connected to the thought process. He finds that the situation was one of population and economic thought, where each one of them used the negotiation of the other. Look at this nucleus, he says. You see that there is a mirror image. It is truly symmetric thinking. It is a symmetric construction. Amelia notices the connection with what Malaguti was saying in his interview about projects, how children integrate in their thoughts the achievements of other children, and that the negotiation does not have to happen always through a battle. Both of them noticed how the beginning of the children was extraordinary. They started drawing together, and then the line separated in a sort of web in which each child found individual identity symbols. I like, says Amelia, when they said, to start we have to decide together. Yes, Giovanni says, this is a way to agree, and these are also the two identities of the children. Here, Alice, Filippo and Andrea are in the atelier with Giovanni and are exploring the water basin for the first time. This play and exploration comes right after trying out the pinwheels running outside. Alice calls Andrea. She asks him to help her. This is the front and here is where the water touches it. Filippo said, I forgot something, the rudder, the Giovanni. What is the rudder for? And he, I will put in a round stick that is attached to another thing that can move and it makes the boat surf. This passage from one medium to another begins with Filippo's drawing which tells about a fish scooped up by the paddle of a water wheel. As you will see, this theme of the paddle as a scoop will influence the future structure of his water wheels in different media. Next we see Filippo after he has made the water wheel in paper. 
He remembers his drawing about the paddle trapping the little fish, so he makes sure that his paddles have an open loop. The curious 90-degree angle to the rim is determined, most likely, by the ease of attaching the paper paddle to the rim this way. We see his clay version next. Since he used his paper version as a model, this curious angle of the paddle is maintained in the clay. His last version, constructed from wood and foil, is made to use in the water basin. Now Filippo thinks more clearly about the function of his paddles to catch the water. He adds ten cups to his water wheel, as if he already realizes that the loops will not catch the water. But notice that the loops still maintain this curious angle to the rim of his water wheel, even when he uses the wooden wheel in his water basin. Now let's watch Filippo and his friends as they work in the water basin and gain greater awareness about how a water wheel works. Understand that it was important for Filippo to make the mistake about the loops that do not catch the water. It helps him better understand why the tin cups work so well. The children are excited to try Filippo's water wheel under the flow of water in the water basin. Giovanni helps them drill a hole in the center of the water wheel. They are attentive to when the drill penetrates the other side of the wooden hub. Simone climbs the ladder, ready to turn on the water faucet. Filippo asks Georgia to help him by holding the other side of the axle. The wheel is placed with the bottom of the cups facing the stream of water. Filippo realizes this and says, Gentlemen, we have to turn it around. Simone, from up on the ladder, asks if they want more water. Each child has found a way to contribute to the task of testing Filippo's water wheel. Giovanni compliments the work. It's stupendous. Filippo complains because the water wheel keeps sliding down the axle. It's hard to keep the axle level. Giovanni asks Filippo, does it work better with the first one, the copper loop, or the second one, the tin cup? Filippo, with these, meaning the cups. The water wheel slides down the axle again. Giovanni reminds them to keep it level. Filippo says, these are little holes in the cups that take in the water. Giovanni asks, what are these little holes for? Filippo says that the water comes out in a spray, something like a jet. Simone wants to know if he should turn the water on fast. Giovanni continues with his questioning about the paddles. Listen, tell me why this one works better. Filippo, because this one does not work, the copper loop. Funny. So with those, it doesn't work then. Filippo, yeah. Georgia decides to help. There's a paddle that jokes, and there's one that's real. Giovanni repeats what Georgia said to help her thought become an anchor for further discussion. Georgia continues, with this one, the loop, the water enters and then goes out. With the other one, it keeps it in a little and then it throws it out. Georgia realizes that if the water did not meet with some resistance from the paddle, then the water could not push the water wheel around. In this episode, we see how practical knowledge is gradually being translated into a more explicit and representational knowledge as the children make water wheels in different media, experiment with them, and discuss these experiments verbally with each other. 
These are the essential ingredients of an emerging curriculum based on the principles of social constructivism. The children continue to work on a second problem, the problem of holding the water wheel level under the water flow. Filippo and Georgia together come up with the idea of making a longer axle so the axle can rest all the way across the opposite walls of the water basin. The longer axle is too thick to pass through the hole in the water wheel. They drill a larger hole in the water wheel so the longer dowel will fit. Then they place the water wheel under the stream of water and watch in comfort and delight as the water wheel spins round and round. Uno da una parte e uno dall'altra, guarda. Un biglietto gratis, ma è bellissima. Una parte, il biglietto gratis, guarda, è fantastico. Ma scriverglielo qua in alto. Oppure lo sono un uomo e non posso mettere. Guarda, guarda. E lì si possono abbeverare. Addirittura qua. Addirittura qua. Guarda, ci faccio il dell'acqua. Io sono sicuro che... Anzi, ci scrivo. E qui che cosa c'è? Questo è una vasca che sta appena un pochino più su, di qua c'è un rubinetto che possiamo aprire e l'acqua va a finire qua e qua pensavo a, a, ad un vostro mulino, non mi sono detto che mi sono sdraiato, funziona lo stesso secondo voi? Eh, però ci vuole qualcosa che In che senso? Messo come? Con il mulino. Questo serbatoio qua allora è là in fondo sulla Alla montagna. Fine della montagna. Alla fine della montagna. Soltanto che loro possono andare dentro soltanto che Ma è bellissimo. È bellissimo, queste girandole ad acqua sono, sono veramente eccezionali. Dopo qui c'è quella lì per farsi la notte, lì che. Questa qua è la montagnola. Alla fine della montagna c'è il grosso Però serbatoio. Quasi su, su in alto. Hai capito dov'è? Questo grosso serbatoio è su in alto. Poi c'è la strada del canale che scende giù, vero? E questo è l'altro. Questo, questo, questo è il ciliegio che noi stupendo, questa è la cosa che ce l'ha, che va bene. E queste bellissime eh, girandole. Sì, dove, dove, dove le mettiamo? 
The three-year-olds have discovered a bird's nest next to their school building. Can you see the beaks of the little birds? They are wide open. Why? The mother is giving them food. The binoculars offer a special challenge for the children. Teachers often provide these slightly advanced challenges. One of the beginning interests of the children was to build again the lake that deteriorated in the previous year. While making the lake and discussing the problems, it became clear how to keep the water clean. They decided to use a huge plastic sheet to cover the depression in the ground. Oh, mamma mia, Laura, che forza! Ci sei riuscita fino in fondo proprio! The children ran back to the lake after turning on the water faucet. Slowly, the lake fills with water. Children from all the classrooms come to play and work. Soon, it becomes a satisfying source of exploration. They make informal fountains at the lake's head. They even taste the food for the birds to check it out. One connection with the community beyond the school was to ask the local Audubon Society, Lipu, to send one of their representatives to talk to the children and to set up with them 
some special bird houses. Children and teachers together become much more aware of birds. The children felt that their work made the birds feel welcome. The city government approved a new branch to the school water supply, especially for the amusement park. The men worked outside for several days and the children watched and asked many, many questions. The workers are well aware of the importance of the school for the children of the town. And they are eager to teach the children about their tools. On a later day, the children attached the channels to the water barrel on the top of the little hill. The teacher had announced to all classrooms that the water was to be turned on for the first time. Creating these expectations is one of the strategies teachers use to keep the focus of the project alive. When the water was turned on, all the Valletta children went outside. They anxiously watch as the level of the water rises high enough to go through the small holes in the basin and into the channels. Close together, they share the excitement as the moment arrives. They cheer the water on. As we continue to learn from our friends and colleagues from Reggio Emilia, documentation based on observation, recording and transcription of words as well as photographs, slides, videos, and children's artifacts is used to reflect critically, as individuals and as a group, on the experiences of children and adults in the school. The analysis and interpretations allow us to construct theories and hypotheses that are not arbitrary, but rather inform teachers on how to proceed in their work respecting children's interests. We have seen this happen throughout the story of this project. In fact, this video is a composite of the documentation done by our friends and the one we did with them. At this point, we can examine the documentation that was prepared by the atelierista and the teachers all along during the process of the amusement park for birds. These panels represent and communicate the layers of meaning of the long and complex itinerary to parents, children, and colleagues. In a way, these panels return to them their own experience. But not only the panels represent the essence of documentation. All the construction by children and teachers, the wonderful machines and fountains, elevators and merry-go-round that are now all around the school and the playground, speak about the joy and participation of a whole school and a community.